Welcome to episode 153 of Radio 815, the podcast dedicated to examining the work of Ready Director J.J. Abrams, as well as his greater Bad Robot Universe. I'm your host for this week. My name is Marcelo Nostroza, joined as always by my fellow co-host, Matt Crandall. And on today's edition of the show, we continue making our way through season two of What About Brian? This week, we're going to talk about episodes four and five. And the first episode up in that batch is the episode entitled, What About the Fish? So, Matt, you're telling me all I have to do is get laid before you and then I can skip out on the bar bill? Great. Sold. I'm doing it. What a... (laughs) This is so like an early 2000s TV kind of thing. Like, let's make a bet to see who can get laid first just so that we can settle like a $50 tab. And so it's, it's funny watching it. And it is, you know, they get a lot of mileage out of it because Brian and Adam have been at each other's throats. And so to have them kind of be a little bit more playful with each other where they're both calling the same women to try and set up dates was funny. And it, it breaks up the monotony of like these friends who now hate each other. And we keep wondering like, why are they still friends? This makes no sense. So I really thought that aspect of this episode was one of the stronger things as we still start to ripple the, the effects of the last few episodes where we see, you know, Last episode ended with Dave and Dina deciding that maybe things were over because Dave got caught thinking that he was meeting Suzanne in a hotel and it was Dina. And so we have to deal with the fallout of that, which then causes more fallout with Dave's professional life in a way that is so frustrating and annoying. But I think all of that is kind of in service of, like I said, we could see them kind of retooling the show live and on the fly where you know marjorie's exit was a big wrench into their overall story plans and then in this episode we introduce brian's dad who we've like barely heard about and that becomes like a thing going forward where obviously this is a character they're bringing in to be a foil for brian professionally and for that to all make sense, they needed a way to make Zap Monkey go away because they want to do stuff. So we are it's weird when you're watching a show and you can feel not that this is where the story would have gone organically. You can see them trying to reset the chessboard, but they're doing it in a way where like we're going to take the first six episodes of this season to actually line up the new dynamic that we want. And that includes the addition of Jimmy and Ivy and making their bar And their stuff a little bit more important. And so, like, we still have the fallout of them calling the cops on Brian and Adam and how that plays out. And it's it's just weird that usually these growing pains for a show are dealt with in between seasons and we just kind of get thrown into the new dynamic. But this show is taking its time to rearrange the pieces as we're watching it. Is that do you feel that at all? Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. I feel uh, I feel that you know, tenfold, because like you said, it's so interesting basically seeing the writers juggle, juggle the storylines that they had in mind uh, before the exit of the actress who plays Marjorie and watching them sort of reset the chessboard live on air. And it's, it's a really, really interesting thing to watch, but it also makes the show very, very unpredictable. But on top of that, it makes it really, really frustrating. Um, the one thing that I absolutely hated about this episode, let me know how you feel the way that Dave acts, uh, towards Suzanne in this episode, Suzanne is the, uh, is the, is the, is the gamer executive chick that Dave slept with after she found out that Dina slept with John Hamm because of uh, proposing the, uh, open marriage thing. The way that he acted towards her after he decided to end the uh, to to end their association, which in turn, which in turn, as a way to her, as a way for her to get revenge, she basically uh, ended the deal between Zap Monkey and her video game company. So the so the video the, so the video game that Brian and Dave were working on is no more, and the only reason for that is because Dave mishandled a relationship with a top executive of the company that they were working with. Now, I 
I like like his behavior towards her really fucking pissed me off. I I I felt so angry with him uh, uh, during this episode. Did you feel some of that, or or is that just me? It's not just you. It's so frustrating to watch Dave fumble and fumble and fumble and they took a character who like was fun as this married sidekick of brian's and and they've kind of dragged him down because he has made all these mistakes but then he keeps making them like you don't you can break it off with you know your side piece but you don't make her feel like an idiot if she also has the password to the server that can ruin your goddamn life you change the password and then you tell her off like you got to use a little bit of common sense and use your head. And what also was frustrating with the whole, you know, Dave is and especially Dave not realizing the consequences of his actions. Dave dumps Suzanne and is kind of rude to her. Then the game gets shelved and the language she uses is exactly the way he was talking to her. So she's letting him know subconsciously the reason your game is shelved is because you dumped me and fuck you but he doesn't pick up on it and he then goes and doubles down after brian puts his entire life financially on the line to get the money to buy the game then dave goes to get his stuff and he's really rude to suzanne and says guess what you were being a bitch and you were being an idiot who knew that it was just sex and we bought our game back so fuck you and then of course she downloads the game and releases it for free there <laughs> It's so frustrating that we'll get there in the next episode. They're like, can we do anything legally? And they're like, no, we can't. Well, that's bullshit. They absolutely could tell Leviathan who who bought their game. One of your employees leaked our game. So you need to give us the 75 grand back because otherwise we will take you to court and we will prove that one of your employees sabotaged our shit. So like, I, I hated that whole thing. It's all just this domino to make brian go and work for his dad but dave is just so stupid he didn't even once he's broken it off he doesn't need to be rude to suzanne because what you got to remember suzanne knew that he was married but knew that he had an open marriage and that things were rocky so she did nothing wrong (laughs) right like her liking dave and wanting to be with dave she's not a bitch for doing that dave's the one who opened that door in the first place So for him to be so rude to her, I understand why she wanted revenge. It just sucks that Brian is the collateral damage of the revenge, and she doesn't know that Brian is now financially ruined. Uh, So like, you know, Dave just being mean for the sake of being mean was petty and he got what he deserved, but he's taken down the whole company and Brian with him. Another thing that really, really bothered me about Dave in this episode specifically is that when Suzanne leaked the video game after he got over that initial shock, it was only then that he mentioned to Brian, oh, by the way, uh, you know, you know, possibly why this happened is because I slept with one of the people on the team that was going to make our to was uh, uh, I slept with one of the people on the team that was going to get our game out there into the public and potentially make us millions. But the, the, the unprofessionalism of Dave to do that and to, and for him to expect Brian to accept that is fucking asinine. So I really like the scene when Brian basically explodes after he told him that, because like, uh, like, like, uh, <clears throat> Matt mentioned Brian basically put put his entire life savings on the line to save that monkey. And because of Dave's poor decisions and because of Dave not being truthful uh, enough with Brian about what is going on in his life, Brian is financially ruined and Dave is just a fucking asshole. It's so I'm like, so what? So what's the deal? And and another thing, I'm just I'm, I'm just thinking about. Uh, of, 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 of reasons to hate Dave in this episode. I'm sorry, guys. Um, after everything goes to shit with Zap Monkey, Dave expects Brian to come up with one more Hail Mary pass to save the company. Why should she have to, why, why should he have to do that? If Dave is the one that got them into this fucking mess in the first place, it makes no fucking sense. So you're telling me your best friend is going to put up his hard-earned money to save, to save the company, to save your company that you fucked up in the first place, and now you accept him, and now you expect him to come up with a golden parachute to save your company that you sabotaged in the first place? 
that's ridiculous. And what's more frustrating is that Brian asked Dave multiple times during the episode, like, everything good? Anything that I should know? And Dave's like, no, no, until it's too late. And if at any point Dave had told Brian the whole story, Brian would say, change all our passwords, get Suzanne out of the inner circle so that this couldn't happen. And so it's it's honestly, I would be more mad at Dave if I was Brian then I think Adam would be mad at Brian for the Marjorie thing because it's just as bad of a betraying your best friend. But this is actually something that like Brian's entire life will be ruined because he has taken all these high interest loans and all this other stuff that like he is not going to get out from under this financially. And we find out when he tries to go and see his dad to see if he can maybe get the money from him first before he decides, I don't want anything to do with this fucking guy. And I'm going to, leverage every ounce of credit I've got, which ends up being the decision that next episode leads him right into his dad's arms. But so they add this element, which tells me right away that something is going to go on with this, this money, because we don't need the dad scene if the dad is not going to come back. And they got character actor, William Devane, who was on 24 memorably for a season. And so when this guy shows up, I'm like, oh, this fucking guy. Okay, this guy's not just doing like a one episode thing. He's here for like an arc because you don't get a guy like this unless he's going to be in it. And so we see that Nicole still talks to the dad and is cool with it, but Brian doesn't. So something has gone on between Brian and the dad. And in their quick meeting, we find out that a lot of it has to do with the way the dad treated Brian's mother as things went from bad to worse. She had mental health issues and lots of stuff. And Brian just does not see eye to eye with his dad. And so I can see them, you know, we have that scene and he's like, come and work for me and I'll give you the money. And Brian's like over my dead body. And when Brian's leaving, we're like, well, we know he's going to have to go work for the dad. But then Brian tries to get the money. And so we know something's going to happen. But if I was Brian, like, I don't know that his relationship with Dave could ever be repaired because Dave did such shady shit. And Dave and Dina are responsible for so much shit in this episode that it's frustrating because also at the same time that all this is going on, Dina is helping getting ready for Nicole's baby shower. And she accidentally lets slip that Angelo is coming for the shower, which was supposed to be a secret. And which is something that if anybody has been listening to our podcast or watching this show, you know, is not going to fucking happen because they just wrote that guy off and they needed to find a way to get him out of, out of the picture. So I'm like, Oh, there's no way Angelo is coming. But then after she does that, Nicole, last week, Dina hurt Nicole big time by saying, you're not a baby person. And Dina gets her comeuppance in this episode because Nicole says, you do know that all of this is your fault in regards <laughs> regarding your marriage. And even though this episode was written by Liz Teaglar, you know, a female female writer who created some great shows like Life Unexpected and has done a lot of good work. I, I felt like the way that people were treating women in this was very kind of misogynistic or like early 2000s thinking where she says to her, this is all your fault because you fucked John Hamm. And I thought, wow, what a way to not be a supportive friend in this woman's hour of need. Even if that is true, I would never say that to my friend. You can say, yeah, you know, this is part of the consequences of your action, but she's just like, it's your fault, you dumb bitch. And I was like, holy crap, Nicole is not pulling any punches. And uh, what did you think as, you know, they're getting ready for this baby shower and Nicole's excited that Angelo is supposedly coming and Dina gets this truth bomb thrown in her face. You know what? I I didn't have that much of a problem with the wording that Nicole used when she told Dina you know, the only reason that this shit between the, the only the only reason that this crap with Dave is happening between you and him is because you fucking slept with the guy that all the moms have slept with in your daughter's school. And the reason for that is because I am between last week and this episode, I am so fucking sick of Dina and Dave. I'm so fucking tired of their shit. I you know, you know, you know what I was doing in this episode in the back of my head as I was watching it, I was, I was running a Deadpool in my brain. I was like, either Dave or Dina have to die because I can't stand to look at them anymore as a couple because it just doesn't fucking, these people are so 
fucking nauseating. And I don't, I don't think I have gone from loving a couple so much to despising a couple so much in this sh- in in this uh, uh, short um, um, expansion of time on a TV show before. It's so fucking frustrating and, and the only people that i can blame for that is i'm not going to blame the the um the actors i'm going to blame the writers but you know but what but, but you know you know what the writers got handed in this second season like we talked about in our open couldn't have been easy but why did they make these people so fucking ugh. I don't know. I, I i can't even i can't even find the words for it help me out here <laughs> right well they've <laughs> In part of resetting this chessboard, they've really taken some characters and just made them despicable so that they can then get a new dynamic going, right? So that we're trying to change this thing. And I think, you know, Nicole being honest with Dina wasn't the only offense that kind of raised my eyebrows. And I think that was just more because the other aspect of this is that Brian and Adam are competing to see who they can screw and throw in the garbage quicker. So that was the other, like, I was like, like they really aren't treating these women like people. They're like, I just need a quick score to get one over on my buddy. Let me call all these idiot women that I've already thrown away and see if I can screw and throw away another one. And I'm like, this is not how we would approach this plot line now. This really reeks of, you know, that early 2000s, late 90s American Pie kind of era where, like, these guys literally start phoning all of the old women that they've gone out with. And Brian sets up a date with a woman that he was extremely rude to. And he shows up not remembering that he's been a complete piece of shit to this person. And Whitney Cummings shows up, comedian Whitney Cummings. And she's like, you don't remember who I am. And Brian's like, of course I do. And she's like, you're a piece of garbage. You were a piece of garbage then. And like, you're a piece of garbage now. And Brian is so desperate to just win this bet that he goes to car girl. And I'm like, are you fucking kidding? This Amy Joe is back, which is nice to see her. But it's like, dude, you got a stage five clinger and you had her out of your life. And now you brought her back just so that you can win this bet. That is horrible. But it is that part is at least funny. And I think that, you know, when Brian and Adam are calling the same woman and she's like, oh, that's funny. I got Brian on the other line. And then she goes back to the line. She's like, Brian, I got to go because she knows that Adam is hotter. I thought it was really funny. And then as this whole like competition is going on, Brian wins it because he does sleep with car girl, but then he is now in like a fully committed long-term relationship that he's going to have to find a way to weasel out. And luckily Angelo is going to give him the out, which is, which is great. (laughs) And then Adam has a meet cute with the stripper from his bachelor party in Rachel LaFave's summer, as we know her in this episode. And he starts, they start to hit it off, but then she also can sense that this dude is just horny for all the wrong reasons and she shuts it down. And so I liked that moment, but what do you think of the Brian and Adam race to get laid and Adam and summer having this meet cute in a grocery store and then them trying to, to lay some foundation for Adam to maybe move on from Marjorie pretty quickly. I did. I listen, listen, I understand what the writers were going for with this comedic competition between Adam and Brian, but I did not like it. You know why I didn't like it? The whole first season was all about Brian, Brian's unrequited love for Marjorie. And there was the, there was the, there was the Adam, there was the Adam wrinkle, you know, you know, you know, in the back of my mind. So this made me feel like, okay, you both of you have lost a woman that you dear for, you know, you know, greatly. And what are you going to do now? You're going to you're going to do a competition to see who can sleep with a woman the fastest to get out of a fucking bar bill to, to get out to get out of paying a bar bill. I, I, I felt that they should. I felt that the writer should have gave the characters a little bit more time to mourn for the loss of Marjorie, because I thought this competition, although funny as hell uh, specifically when uh when uh, Brian got maced by Whitney Cummings at the you know you know uh, at the outdoor restaurant that was really cool but I was like I don't know if this I don't know if this storyline is appropriate not for today but for the characters uh for 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 the situation that the character for the situation that the characters are in right now as people 
Um, you mentioned summer. I think that summer is the writer's way to show to the audience that no, you know, we understand that we didn't write Adam correctly. And through this character, we're going to show you that Adam can change as a person and we're going to make him lovable through this character. So I'm excited to see where that goes. Matt, you have something to say? Sorry. I was going to say, we got, well, they find out that Angelo died at the end of this episode. Uh, with, with the bad news right on top of our heads, we move on to uh, the second episode that we're going to talk about this week entitled, What About Angelo's Ashes? So Matt, my question to you is, um, have you seen these ashes before? I haven't, but I got to tell you that, you know, we knew Angelo was not long for this world because he's been shooting this movie out of town and every time he's supposed to be on a phone call or whatever, he's been missing it. And at the end of last episode, fucking Brian and car girl are going to pick up Angelo at the airport and Brian gets a call that Angelo is dead. There's a car accident. Angelo is dead. And so they go to the party and Brian is a horrible brother. To be honest, he's, he's awful. He shows up at the party and Nicole's like, where's Angelo? And Brian stands across the room, 20 feet across, and just looks sad. And she then realizes, like, where's Angelo? And Brian just stands there looking sad. And I'm like, go give your sister a fucking hug. Pull her into another room and tell her her husband is dead. And Brian just stands there looking like a sad puppy dog from 20 feet away. Can't even hug his sister. Can't even tell her. And so then we pick up where we are getting ready for Angelo's funeral. So we've jumped over the... The like gut wrenching. She just finds out scene. We've skipped that. Thank God. Cause I don't know that it would have been worth seeing. And I love that everybody is like, Oh, this is awkward. It's horrible. And car girl is like, I kind of got to get the fuck out of here. <laughs> like I thought me and Brian were going to maybe get back together, but like, this is too much. And so she actually Brian and everybody's saying to Brian, like, you got to get rid of this bitch. You got to get her out of here. And luckily they mutually decide now is not the right time and they're going to they're going to part ways and everybody is marveling at how Nicole seems to really be handling this well and so we know that by the end of this episode there's going to be a breakdown because they're like she's handling this so well she's so strong and I'm like this is bullshit especially she's pregnant so like her hormones and emotions are going to be going crazy and her husband has died and there's also I just want to point out, you know, there's a moment where she gets a package from Angelo near the end that actually causes the breakdown after we find out this whole she stole the ashes. And like, I hated everything to do with the, the stealing of the ashes and whatever, partly because Nicole has not been a character that we really connect with that much. She does a lot of weird, erratic things, and she's been a liar to her husband, and they've done so much weird stuff with that character and she and Brian should have this really tight, like emotional relationship and they don't. And I'm like, well, then why do we even have the sister be part of the group? If she was just another friend, the show would play out exactly the same. So like that keeps bugging me as she does these erratic things. But I just have to say in terms of like the Angelo death stuff, you know, I don't know if it was just they didn't want this actor back or what. Like, it's not like he got canceled or something. He's still around. He's still working. <laughs> so, like, I, I'm not sure why he wasn't back. But there is one thing where they're like, yeah, Angelo died in a car wreck. And they're like, yeah, it's unbelievable. What the fuck was he even doing in that part of whatever? Wasn't he supposed to be in this other part? And it, it's such it's never addressed again in this episode. But it's such a red flag for, like, something is going to come back later. Because they're like, it's really weird that Angelo was in this other part of Italy. We thought he was supposed to be in this other part. So, like, the TV guy in me is like, okay, we're not done with Angelo, even though he is now dead. Because that line of dialogue was such a red flag for, like, why would the friends even point that out to us when their friend had died? Unless it was going to be a plot point later. Did you catch that at all? Or is this news to you? E yeah, I did. I caught it. And when I heard it, I had to actually I, I had to actually uh, rewind the, the, the episode. I'm like, why would they say that in such a specific way? Because Angelo was supposed to be in Los Angeles filming a movie. Right. And and right after right after they said uh, uh, the line in question, 
I think Brian said that he was on. He he was like uh, Ang- Angela was on vacation. So, uh, so I think that the writers try to cover up their plotting for something bigger to happen with the Angela character later on by Brian saying that oh the reason why that the, the reason why he was in this part of the world is because he was on a break from the movie that he was supposed to be shooting in LA or 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 wherever he was supposed to be shooting um i do want to move to the point that you mentioned nicole as a character has been so much has been so mismanaged throughout this entire series i really like this episode but do you know why i like this i like this episode for all the wrong reasons the reason why i like this episode is because this episode showed me that the writers can give Nicole and Brian scenes together. So all through, so so all throughout this episode, I'm thinking, you know, this episode would hit a hundred times harder if they would have developed her character and they would have given Nicole some scenes together with Brian in season one. Because the reason why I'm loving this so much is because we haven't gotten any of it before. <laughs> like, like, like this, this episode for all intents and purposes is centered around Nicole. And if you've been watching since season one or you've been listening to us, you were like, wow, this is something really cool. And this really works. Why didn't they do this before? So that, that will always be one of my biggest mysteries of this show. Why they mishandled this character so much. Like I, I couldn't believe it. <laughs> That's a mystery. And also... You know, this is an MFZ again, a Marjorie Free Zone. And regardless of what happened with her and Adam, she was part of the group and presumably knew Angelo just as well as all these other people. And she can't even be bothered to come back for his fucking funeral. Are you kidding me? Good riddance, bitch. What the hell? So I thought like we we don't even really give her like a mention, like hardly at all, if at all. So I that just stuck out to me that like we couldn't even have her phone in to try and offer her condolences or something like it was really weird and conspicuous. And, you know, as the zap monkey stuff continues, so the, the Angelo stuff is, is the a storyline, but the B storyline is that Brian and Dave are still fucked. And Dave, Dave cuts bait. Dave is such a dick. He's like, Brian, um, I know you ruined your life because I wasn't honest with you. And I didn't tell you about all this stuff that could completely fuck all of us over. And in fact did, but now I have actually taken a job somewhere else and I'm leaving you high and dry. So good luck, buddy. See you later. And Brian's like, oh, I guess I got to go work for my dad. And we're like, well, yeah, of course that's how this was going to play out. And so Brian takes the job with his dad begrudgingly, and they still are kind of butting heads about this thing that happened with the mom. And the dad's trying to get Brian to see his side of the story. And Dave is now going to go work somewhere else. So Zap Monkey is no more. So we don't have this, you know, Brian and Dave at work dynamic that we were kind of like was weaved into season one, but not so much that it's really going to change much of the show. Um, so I thought that was interesting that we're we're resetting that so that these two guys don't work together. They work somewhere else. So we can now have Brian have dramatic tension with his dad at work. But we can also cut to, you know, Dave being the odd man out at some new job and probably being like the old guy in like a young situation or something to get some humor out of that. And then we <laughs> more workplace stuff. We find out that Adam has been acting so erratic since getting left at the altar that he got passed over for partner and Jimmy got it. And so did somebody else. And Adam didn't get this big promotion that he really wanted. So his work life is also shit. So that's going to cause some tension, but then they try and get us to Adam and summer who he discovers her real name is Heather, not summer. Summer is her stripper name. They keep trying to make that relationship grow so that can be something going forward. How do you feel about all of this? You know, we're resetting the entire workplace storylines of this show because Adam, who was a hot shot and doing great, is now passed over because he is not any good at his job anymore. And Brian has to go work for his dad. First of all, did you realize that the 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 job that Dave took 
is that that company that Dave and Brian tried to sell their last stitch game to that that's a he he took the job at the company that Brian and and him pitched to their their last game idea called Evolution or something which sounded pretty cool but in but but in practice it probably would have been awful just like ugh. Yeah, but uh, how did you fa- how did you feel about that just real quickly, and then I, and and then I'll talk about all the Adam stuff and everything else. Well, their pitch didn't go great, so like the guys in that meeting kind of seemed like dicks. <laughs> so so it's weird that they had to obviously they wanted to give a reason for Dave to get this call out of the blue, and for Brian to have not done great in the pitch, so that that's why they don't want Brian. But um, again, it just felt like we need to get to point B, so. We got to drop this scene in so it's not out of nowhere. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, the other thing, the the other thing that I hated about sort of sort of Dave leaving Brian high and dry is that his excuse for leaving Brian high and dry and leaving him, you know, in the middle of the ocean without a fucking paddle, basically, is he's like, oh, I got a family I need to think about. Motherfucker, if you were so concerned about your family, then you wouldn't have done this thing. Ugh. Oh, control yourself. It's only a show. Oh, <laughs> it it just it just really pisses me off. But um, but also to your point, I really think that uh, uh, the way that the writers are sort of restructuring the chessboard to use your wording is really really interesting. I just think that these two episodes have been a victim of them trying to reshuffle the show into what they think. Uh, uh, could be best for it moving forward. The uh, the Adam and Summer stuff. I'm still going to call her by a super name because I like that name better. Um, I think is all great, but I do think that Adam is a spoiled child because because uh, when uh, uh, him and Summer sit down to have like a to to have like a, a lunch date together, she is remarking on seeing his yearbook. And reading his, you know, senior thesis of everything that he wanted to do in his life. And she's going, why can't you be that guy? What is preventing you from being that guy? And Adam goes, oh, that guy is long gone. I have to be all grown up and all this, all, all this bullshit. And she gets angry at him and she basically pays for his, pays for his meal, which was kind of funny because she paid for it all in dollar bills, obviously. But... <laughs> She was like, you know what? I would love to meet that guy who wrote those things in his yearbook. I don't want to meet the lawyer guy. But I, I hate the, I hated the way that Adam acted because Adam is such a fucking sore loser and such a dick in this episode just because he lost her fucking promotion. I understand that he's still dealing with his Marjorie stuff, but that ends. He's dealing with the Angelo stuff as well. But that really, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. That didn't sit with me. Uh, as well as it probably should have. Well, and again, that is all leading to probably another reset of Adam <laughs> because if he got passed over for this job and now he's realizing that the path untaken might be the path he should have taken, is he going to be a lawyer for much longer in this show or is he just going to fuck off <laughs> right, and do something else? Because these two episodes, more than any others, you know, the the Marjorie walking out of the wedding is a monumental thing that helps the reset. But these two episodes both have like the most resetting going on. So it was almost like I don't want to spread false rumors, but it's it's like the show realized we need to retool. And ABC probably said, like, we'll give you guys like a handful of episodes to reset. And then you guys got to figure it out or like we're done. And so they realized, okay, we will take these six episodes, which I'm sure that, you know, a lot of these shows were written in batches. So I'm sure that they were like, Let's do that, and then we will we'll do the reset and see how that goes. If we can boost the the ratings, and it what it ended up not being enough because this show is only a two season show. But it's interesting because usually when that happens, it's like the showrunners and the whole writing staff leave and they bring in new people. But so far, it seems like it's a lot of the same people just realizing that the show that they were making is not the show that people wanted to see. So they had to retool it as it was going. And so that's kind of interesting to watch those growing pains pay, play out live in front of our eyes each episode where like we're almost there, where they don't want this old married couple like 
Dave and Dina are basically about to be divorced by the time this one is is done. But then we get like a are they? So like we start to we start to wonder, which I don't want like this will they won't they drawn out with Dave and Dina just sign the papers and let's call it a day. But also, you know, I also don't care for like a Nicole being a detective storyline where she finds out that Angela was doing some weird shit in Italy that we're going to have to look into. So every time they do something that I like, which I do think, you know, getting rid of Dave and Brian working at this video game company and going out on these awkward pitches, like, I don't want to see that show. I don't mind having Brian have to work for his dad and have this father-son drama. I actually think that could give some good results. But then at the same time, they keep adding stuff that I don't want at all. And if we cared more about Adam, we would care more about what Heather said to him when he's taking those words to heart or not, but because he's been such a douche, we're just like, well, it's going to be in one year and out the other. And if it's not, it's going to ring false. So every time this show does something, I like, they do two things. I don't. And I keep feeling like, you know, last week they had some of it, right. Where the fun stuff about this show is supposed to be all these couples and third wheel, Brian, who's like the single guy and him having these crazy dating misadventures And his friends trying to intervene. I like that show more than like, this is kind of starting to become like a very, a lot heavier, I feel. Whereas it was a lighter show to start, but now we've got to deal with divorce, death, all these heavy themes. Whereas when it started, it was just like, wouldn't it be funny if this single guy fucks up all the time he's trying to get laid and he's looking for love and like, it's just not going his way. And we're moving further and further away from that. And I kind of wish we could get back to the lighter tone. Yeah, I think, well, 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 I think the show uh, went through one nuclear explosion that it couldn't survive. And that nuclear explosion was a lot, was the, was the loss of the actress who played Marjorie. Because imagine, just imagine if Marjorie was still a part of the show. If she was still a part of the show, all of this restructuring probably wouldn't have taken place. If she was still a part of the show, we probably would have seen the original vision that the showrunners wanted to do with season two. And I guarantee to you that it, it in their original plans, uh, they they probably wanted to pick up all, uh, all of that story that they plotted with Nicole and Angelo in season two, but because of their restructuring, they had to, you know, for some reason, let that poor actor go which I'm glad to know that he's still working today. But um, yeah, I just, I, I just think that this show was, was, was sort of cut off at the knees before it had a chance to, to breathe really. Um, and look, I am, I am really, really interested of, you know, uh, of, of watching whether Dave and Dina get a divorce, because I had mentioned previously that that was something that I was hoping that they were going to go, down the road and deal with divorce between Dave and Dina. But at this point, I'm like Matt at this point in the next episode, I just want to see them sign the papers and fuck off. The other thing that I'm not too excited about is Brian working for his dad, because I, because I don't like when characters are set up to be so independent and because of something that happens within the storyline, they have to fall back onto their parents. I really think that Brian is going to get stuck working in that job. And are you telling me that Brian can't do the same thing that Dave did? Or, or or do you think that Dave was the genius of Zap Monkey and Brian was a guy that sort of was just hanging there? I think Brian could do what Dave did, but because he took out those extremely high interest loans and cashed in all those things with penalty, he is not going to be able to to spend six months trying to find a job in video games because he is financially fucked right now. And so that's that's why they did that, right? Is so that he has to do this because otherwise he's going to be evicted. He's not going to be able to eat. He's going to be sleeping on his friend's couch instead of having his friend sleep on his couch. And so like that's that's where we're going, I think. That's why. And I think it would be interesting if Brian is good at his new job with his dad. Maybe this is his calling and he just ignored it because he doesn't get along with his dad. Maybe this will be something. And if it's not, then hopefully there'll be some hot chicks there that Brian can run through and we can have some misadventures with him getting caught, like in the work bathroom, doing some inappropriate shit. So like, let's see how this plays out. I'm interested to see where they're going to take it. 
And, you know, I remembered the big beats from watching this when it aired, but the the small minutia, like I remember Brian go to work for his dad. I don't remember anything else that happens. I remembered that Angelo had died. I don't remember the exact specifics of what's uncovered, but I, you know, certain things ping that I'm like, oh yeah, I vaguely remember that. So it was, you know, 17 years ago that I watched this show. So like, I'm interested to see how it plays out, even though this is a rewatch for me, but We'll have to see where it's headed in the next couple episodes. Yeah, and listen, uh, my favorite, my favorite scene of the entire episode is when uh, is when uh, Nick basically has the breakdown that uh, that Matt referenced earlier on in this episode, and she is in. She's basically in the crematorium and basically cradling Angelo's ashes, and she's like, "Oh, I can't let go. I can't let go because." You know, it it just hit me like, what am I going to do? And I was seeing, I was, I was, I was sitting there, watching the scene play out, and I'm like, I mean, we've said it before in this episode, but I want to say it one more time just to drive the knife in deeper. This scene, this scene would have worked so much better if her character was written differently, and if she wasn't Brian's sister, if she was somebody else to to take a note uh, from from my co-host's book, like. It's just so disappointing. And and, and, and and you know what pisses me off even more about it? The actress who plays Nicole did such a good job with that scene and another scene where she has a blowout with Brian in her in her bedroom after Brian confronts her about having Angelo's urn in the closet in the first place. This actress is capable of going to those levels and the fact that they didn't take advantage of that really just fucking irks the shit out of me. So do you think that they are going to explore the, the mental illness angle that they introduced with Brian's father saying that his mother wasn't, uh, 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 mentally all there. Is, is that, is that a road that you're looking forward to Nicole going down in the future? I mean, she's already going to deal with Angelo shit. Absolutely not. Like, especially the, the mental health attitudes, even, 17 years ago were so different than they are now that it's going to it's going to hit different and probably feel really insensitive and fucked up that I I don't want to see them go down that road and yeah like the the hard part is Rosanna Arquette gets some great scenes but they all feel unearned because they didn't do the work they didn't do the work and if her and Brian had a better relationship then it would feel more essential that they have these big moments together if they felt like a family if we actually cared if a lick about Angelo, which we don't. And even when they're getting rid of, they're putting his ashes into the ocean off the pier and Adam puts on the jaunty cap that Angelo used to wear. And I'm like, fuck you. Like none of us have affection for Angelo. I barely remembered that he wore these stupid hats until Adam pulls this out and you're trying to make it a heartwarming moment, but it's just house cleaning. You're just setting a table, like just fucking bring the meal out already. I don't need all of this shit. Cause you haven't earned it. You didn't do the work and you're trying to take shortcuts. And it's funny because like I said, I've seen this before and I had fond memories of like loving this show. And now I'm in the rewatch. I'm like, why did I love this show when it aired? Because there's so much bullshit and there's so many shortcuts taken. And, and so much of this is annoying me that I'm like, I really hope that in this back half of season two, they start to pull it out. Because season one did have some really high highs, but so far in season two, we have not hit any of them. Yeah, look, 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 look. As somebody who is watching the show for the first time, I'm really disappointed because I've gotten a lot of I've gotten a lot of the things that I thought I was gonna get, but not in the package that I was gonna get. I think I I, I think the biggest shock for me was uh, as we were getting closer to the end of season one, and you sort of dropped the hammer on me going uh, just so you know, one of these characters isn't going to be here next season and that's going to fuck up everything that really, that really, you, you, you know, took my breath away in all the wrong reasons. I'm like, what are you talking about? The show can't go on without her. She's the glue. And I really think that that's coming. I, I really think that her absence is, uh, really, uh, indicated to me how important she was to the show. And it's just unfortunate that, the bean counters uh, uh, behind the scenes didn't recognize that and didn't negotiate her contract fairly enough for her to stick around. Right. It's 
basically if after the first episode of season two, Joey Potter said, guys, I'm leaving Capeside. See ya. And we still had to go on with the show. It would be like, are you fucking kidding me? How did this happen? <laughs> right? So, you know, I, I feel for the people involved that they had to do all this work, but you know, we will, I'll hopefully try and be more positive as we move forward, but we'll see, especially now that we got Angelo out of here. I've been waiting for that shoe to drop. So like that guy's fucking gone. So let's, let's get the, what about Brian 2.0? Let's hit the gas on this thing. All right, guys. And on that positive note, that'll do it uh, for this week's edition of Radio 815. Listen, guys, if you like anything that we do here, I encourage you to give us a like, a comment, uh, wherever you happen to be listening to this to on. We're on all podcast services, and we're also on YouTube at youtube.com slash Radio 815. Uh, if you want to reach out to us personally, you can send us an email at uh, Radio 815 at AOL.com. But if you want to reach me and talk to me about anything having to do with What About Brian or Bad Robot in general, uh, you can... <clears throat> You can actually reach out to me on our X page. It's uh, JJ Universe 815. Uh, but Matt, if uh, the audience doesn't want to reach out to you, where can they attempt to? They can come and log some movies on Letterboxd. I've got an account over there. And uh, my user handle is MDC3000. All right, guys. So thank you so much for listening. But until next time, as I say often, we'll talk back soon. Radio 815 is a Balloonhead Productions presentation in association with Killer Newt Productions.